Hello, we are in Old Town Tacoma, where the Old Town Business Association is organizing the Art Hub. Yes, and you can come and visit different stores. We have artists from all over the place, and you can hop from one place to the other. It's like having a museum, not in a venue, but in your whole neighborhood. Come and enjoy. It's a whole weekend of art and entertainment. We're here at the Magic Carpet, as usual, as every year, uh, one of our favorite spots with Rob Rudick. Hello, Rob. Hello. And uh, Rob, you're a photographer or are you more than a photographer? No, I'm a photographer. That's really my only skill. Yeah, but now photography is more than just click. Right. Actually, it's, it's interesting you mention that because uh, once you've taken the picture, that's like half the process or a third of the process, production and producing an art product, something that uh, you can sell as art is really a, another task in itself. And I see that you concentrate in, in your trip, so it's mainly outdoor photography? Or well, no, outdoors and interiors. I pretty much say that anything that passes my eye is fair game for a photograph, mm -hmm. and my portfolio is very varied. And what do you do with the uh, photographies? You touch them with Photoshop? Or oh, abs sort of absolutely. I think it's my job as an artist mm -hmm. to, to bring out the best possible picture that I can, yeah. and Photoshop is the tool that I use. Yeah, and you have to take uh, use of the technology now that we right have, uh, right and the technology is amazing and the wonderful thing yeah. of course about Photoshop and di working digitally is that once you've made all the corrections to your picture you only need to do it once mm -hmm. and one thing that I, when I look at your photographs uh, is, is color I get color out of it what exactly. do you think are your main traits color shape and then also oh, content. I mean, uh, I'm also attracted to whimsy in addition to beauty. Mm -hmm. If something's funny, I, I think yeah. that's worth <laughs> photographing as well. Can you show us some of your late work? Yes, this is all my most Latest recent pictures. Movies. I recently did a trip to New Mexico, which has been a mecca for artists for the last 150 years at least. And you can see why. This was taken at the Ghost Ranch, uh, where Georgia O'Keeffe uh, oh, first yeah. planted in New Mexico and painted it. It's a very popular site. And then this also, actually, is also steeped in O'Keeffe. This is the yeah. famous San Francisco de Assis Church just oh, yes. outside Taos, New Mexico, which has been painted and photographed a million times. Mm -hmm. But I have to say, I think this uh, picture actually compares favorably with the other art that has been done there. I have to say that. <laughs> yeah, and it looks uh, look almost like a painting more than a photo. And it does, and there's, there's definitely a human form to this picture, to yes. this church, which I think is why it's been so popular. And then yes. just one other to show you, this is... Uh, Scenery again, this is from the Chama River Valley, yeah. which was a very famous uh, site for ancient Indian civilizations. And you can see how lovely it is. And the skies in New Mexico are just fabulous, <laughs> really just fabulous. And this, the, for me, this is the heart of the art hub because you can go to a different business, see different work of artists. It's like being in a museum, but not in a venue, but in, in a neighborhood. Well, that's the wonderful thing. We have so many artists in town now and so many different media. And really, we got to give thanks to Bobby Kittner whose idea this was 10 years ago she yeah. uh, created art hop and it's been a really a lasting thing for tacoma park it's a wonderful mm -hmm. wonderful event See, and you're photograph a photographer but uh, have you uh, experienced experiment with other art forms i have not actually mm -hmm. uh the only thing i'm moving out on a limb is i'm starting to try to coat my photographs with wax so oh, i don't yeah. have to use glass yeah. and that's a whole new learning experience that i'm actually mm -hmm. currently involved in yeah, I personally get stuck with crayons and Play-Doh. I start that's my art, <laughs> at the end of my artist career. Okay, thank you, Rob. And, thank you very uh, much. It was always beautiful, and every year is a great talk. It's always a pleasure to talk with you guys. Thank you so much. And thank you. We'll be back with more artists and more venues here in the Art Hub. Hi, we're here back at the Art Hub in Tacoma Park, and now I'm um, with Tia from Job Petite. Hi, Tia, how are you? Hi, I'm good, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us, and tell us a little bit about your work. So I make handmade journals, um, and I like to make pocket-sized journals that are easy to carry, either in a purse or in a pocket that can actually fit in your back pocket or a coat pocket. Um, so I make them by hand, each and every one of them, and um, I really enjoy doing that because I like to write and I've always kept a journal or a diary and um, I collect notebooks and journals because of that. So I started about two years ago trying to learn the craft of book binding. So I took a workshop um, at Pyramid Atlantic Art Center, an intro to book binding and from there I took another um, handmade book um, book binding workshop. I try to pick something that's fun. Um, I do like a lot of color or something that's just um, stylish. Um, so these are all commercial fabrics. 
but I also make custom covers, such as this one here. So I just try to pick something that's fun, but also um, stylish. And I like a lot of gold. I like the metallic colors as well mixed in to give it a pop. But um, I just try to think of what someone else would like or something fun that they would like to pick up and write in every day. And do you make them in different sizes? Um, no, I try to keep them to the pocket size. And the reason for that is, as I mentioned, I, I do write and um, I like something that's light. And I think a lot of writers do like to carry a notebook with you, with those of us who like to write by hand. Um, so I like something that's easy to carry and light and it doesn't take up a lot of room in my purse. But also, um, another uh, decision, another factor in that was my uh, mother and my grandmother were ill and they were ill very close together. They passed within months of each other. And when we were in the hospital a lot, I noticed that um, doctors and nurses, they kept in residence when they were writing notes, they were on random pieces of paper a lot of times. And I thought, oh, it would be nice if they could find something that would fit in the coat pocket or in the, um, like in a nurse's uniform, they had the pockets. So I wanted to make something that was small enough for them to carry and to um, use when they're writing notes and taking notes on their patients. And I notice a lot of people are more are using journals more and more. What do you think it's that? Um, I think it's kind of like a return to analog because there's been this switch to digital and everybody wants to keep everything electronically and do take notes on your phone or on your computer, which is great. But I think um, there's something to be said about the tactile nature of writing by hand. And I think that people realize that it's cathartic. Um, I think especially for journaling and keeping a diary, which I've always done, I think is very um, healthy for people to keep a document of how they're feeling and recognize patterns. So I think that maybe that's a resurgence in kind of like self-awareness. And maybe people are noticing that journaling and keeping a, or keeping a diary is um, helpful that way. It's a cathartic kind of um, habit. To keep. Right, and it's, I think it's more accessible sometimes and you can exactly. always go back exactly. um, versus an electronic version that sometimes may be challenging for people to access. Exactly. Um, so tell us, um, how long does it take to make a journal? Well, I think it varies. It's pretty time consuming. So I've actually improved my time. Originally, it would take me like a couple of days to make one, then it took a day to make one. Now I can make maybe like five a day, but um, it takes, I would say maybe an hour or two to make one because you have to, um, so there's sewing and then there's gluing and you have to let the glue dry before you go on to the next phase of gluing. So it's, I've broken it down into like seven phases. So you do have to set it aside for a minute to let it dry. So because of that, it can take like an hour or two for one book. Great, and what has been your experience here at the Art Hub? Oh, it's been really great. This is my first experience with Art Hub. Um, I wasn't familiar with it before, so I really love it. Um, there's a lot of art, really talented artists here. It's a really lovely event, and we're all um, supportive of each other, and I can't wait to do it again. Okay, well, thank you so much for joining us, and sure. I wish you luck. And uh, you. guys, please uh, stop and see Tia here at Jad Petit at uh, the Art Hub in Tacoma Park. Hello, and we are at Tacoma Central Apartments. Here in the lobby, they have an exhibit of five artists, and I'm here with Jennifer Brewer Stone. Jennifer, you said you're a painter, but I see some things that for me that's beyond painting. So tell us I'm what you painter, do. I'm a painter, I'm an artist, so um, these are all oil on canvas or panel. And then these pieces up here are with resin. Um, so these are actually fluid pores, so it's a little bit of a different technique. Yes. And how, how do you start painting this? And what do you go from paintings to the other? I'm really attracted to bright colors and um, I love natural flora and fauna and so I started painting you know these really bright flowers but I wanted to try doing some things that are a little more sculptural and uh, a little more experimental but all of so them, I started working all of that. them look like uh, like nature I see like yeah. the ocean yeah or... I'm really attracted to nature yeah, you see. Yeah. okay and uh, you started painting or have you experimented with other art um, yeah, yeah, I've done drawing and other things besides painting, so, yeah. Hey, and then once, what is exactly method, what uh, 
material do you use? And sure, it's resin, it's honey-like, so it's two parts that are combined together, and that honey material, once it combines, it starts to cure, so it starts to become hard over time. But I can add colors into it when it's still fluid. Well, you add colors after or before, or how do you...? Um, the color is right when it's still fluid, when it's like honey, and I have about half an hour to work with it to add the color in, and then it'll start to harden after that, and that time. And that color is uh, oil? What is that? Uh, it's all fluid acrylic and pigments. So. Okay. And how do you get involved in the art hub? Uh, I have some friends in town, and they mentioned this to me, and I thought it would be a good opportunity to show my work. What do you think about the art house? I think it's fantastic how so many artists Oh, there. yeah, it's really exciting. I want to walk around a little bit after this and see some of the other work. All right. Thank yeah. you very much, Jennifer. Thank I you. I appreciate it. I'm going to yeah. keep hopping Sounds through great. the art in Old Town Tacoma. <laughs> Hi, we're here at the Art Hub in Tacoma Park with Stuart. Um, he's one of the artists that's displaying their, um, his artwork here at the Art Hub. Hi Stuart, how are you today? Good, how are you, Claudia? Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your work? Sure. So most of what you see on the wall here is uh, from Newfoundland, and we've been doing work on a film project. The photography is sort of follows the path that we've been taking with the film work as we've been trying to document these villages that are disappearing um, and these are old fishing villages and some of the imagery that you'll see are active villages some of them are the abandoned ones there's a couple scenes that really show you where an entire village is empty and you've got all of these different houses and equipment sort of sitting there as it has been for the last um, decade or so so we're working on this film that's covering both kind of the economic, social, cultural aspects of the changes that are taking place in Newfoundland and what they call uh, outports, fishing outports. Um, some of them are um, roadless, so you literally have to get there by boat. And that's one of the reasons why they're closing up. The, the film is called Gone the Fish, Gone the Children, because in fact the, the families, the children are just moving away and it is creating the circumstance where after a certain while there's just older people left and if they want their, their uh, mail still delivered, if they want power, if they want trash pickup, deliveries, they've got to have more people there otherwise the Canadian government is closing them down so a lot of the, the imagery is, is a little bit stark and that's why there's a lot of the black and white and the old window panes that I've used to, to, to mount them in. And how did you get involved in the documentary? So. Uh, it's funny. On the one hand, it's because I sat next to a guy in a plane mm -hmm. who, as I was working on, because I do other work that's related to oceans and islands and, and communities and community development, and when I told him I was doing photography and film work, he said, well, I've got a film for you. Turns out that I, my mom's also Canadian and we have relatives in Newfoundland, and so sort of two worlds came together where I hadn't really thought about it, but the, the aspects of fishing and the pressures of globalization and uh, changing economics globally is something that we see on all the islands that I work on but as it turns out Newfoundland is a place where you know I have family and I could go up I could stay with them and so you'll see some imagery that are from those villages we were able to sort of meet people and meet fishermen and do interviews and do things that really contributed to making the film something that was I wouldn't say easier to do but we had a reach that wasn't so hard because it was it was actually family and or, or friends of family or distant distant family so um, that's those are the two things that triggered it is the guy in the plane and then the family connection okay and how did you uh, select the images how do you know this is the right picture do you just um, hmm. go to different places and always carry your camera with you or is one of those things that just takes uh, some more involvement you have to uh, really spend some time to capture the right image. So it, I think it's a mix, is that I think sometimes you, and this is the case in Newfoundland as well, you kind of come into one of these locations and there's this house or there's a scene that's just so striking and you know it is, um, and you know right that second as a photographer or a filmmaker that you're kind of capturing a scene that is going to be good later. Um, you also shoot lots and lots of pictures and lots and lots of footage that don't turn out to be what's useful. And as they say, that ends up on the cutting room floor because you're just literally not going to ever use that. So on the film and video side, you're shooting a lot more than you're going to use. It's somewhat that way with digital film. I'm old enough that I use the film camera until I use the digital camera. And so you, you have to be less careful with every shot you make. 
but there are times where you just know what's, and you come back and you look and you think, yep, that's the scene, that's the feeling it evokes, that's the sort of like immediate thought you have as you walk into that village, as you drive into that village, or you, you see a particular landscape. So sometimes you know at that moment, sometimes you see it afterwards and think, ah, I, I didn't even notice that. Great. And has, what has been your experience here at the Art Hub in Tacoma Park? So this is my first Art Hub. I have for years now said, oh, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. I'm busy doing other things or I'm traveling because I do a lot of traveling for all of my work. And this year I decided I'm going to apply way ahead of time and, and make sure that I can get in if I can get in. And I'm super pleased with the space I'm in. Tacoma Central has been great as a, as a host location. Um, and the team that's doing the work, Kim in particular and others that are helping out are just, they've been incredible um, in helping us set up and, and get in our place and work with the, uh, the hosts and, and also work with other artists who are here uh, being displayed as well. So, um, and I love my particular space. Um, so I don't know if I can be back here next year, but um, I would love to be. I'm sure you will. Well, thank you so much for joining us and we wish you luck on your film. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hello, we're still here at the Art Hub. We are at Yoga Heights, and I'm with Jan Granwell, an artist. Jan, please tell us what is your art. What is? Uh, I would call it sort of geometric abstraction. Yeah, okay. Yeah, uh, other things, but a lot of lines, a lot of geometry, a lot of, uh, you know, nothing in specific. It's not based on the world around us, so therefore it's abstract. Yeah, but I see that most of them look kind of the same, the circle mm -hmm. with the right race. How do you do yeah. that? How do you well, I came up with that sort of as like the simplest idea that I could come up with. And then you can do an infinite number of things with that. And it's a universal image, you know, like yes. the sun or yes. Egyptian art or Japanese art or the eclipse that we had last yes. year. Yes, yeah, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and you have others, uh, also some kaleidoscopy, some very abstract. Mm -hmm. How do you have the ideas bes beside the, the circle and the race? And they the just sound? generate themselves. Yeah. I, I, you know, one begets another. But, and, but how do you, what is the material? Is wood? Or how do you, what material well, do you Well, like this is a wood. It's a nice panel. Yes. And most of them are wood panels. And I use tape, such as this kind of tape, yes. to make stripes. Okay, and then okay. with acrylic paint. Okay. Yeah, it's a process. Very, very interesting. A lot of tape. And how long it takes you to do one of them? I would say this probably took about 12 hours. Okay. Yeah. All right. And uh, how did you start doing this? When, when did it come from? Uh, art has always been part of my life. And then uh, I was in graduate school for music. And right. I got bored. And I started doing art. And I said, oh, well, this is more interesting than grad school for music. So. Yeah, actually, this feel very mus musical yeah, to yeah, me. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Particularly like that. I yeah. see, of course, color and line here, the circle shapes. Uh, what attracts you of art? What do you see? Is this well, I like bold colors, uh, psychedelic colors that you know come from the 60s. I mean, they're, they're universal colors, yes. but the psychedelic art from the 60s is something yeah. that's always inspired me. And that is influenced by other stuff. Yeah. And then, you know, throughout the planet, and I like art from around the world that just reminds me of that psychedelic yes. worldview. <laughs> okay. And uh, it, when, it, when do you work at night? Do you need to yeah. smoke I'm a, something no, before? No, no <laughs> smoking of anything. Uh, and uh, I work in a library during the day. So oh, I yeah, do this yeah, on the, in the evenings and weekends and stuff. This energy, you have to release that energy. Well, not just that, yeah. I don't need a lot of sleep. So I tend to work a lot in the evenings yeah. and, you know, right. sleep deprived. I think that, I mean, uh, they're very nice, and I think you, how is the art hub? Is, you like the art hub, or? Yes, yeah, this is my first year doing it. Uh, I live, I'm a local resident, so, you know, it's yeah. been nice to be part of something local. Yes, and uh, let's see, you have uh, had some very, uh, a lot of people coming and looking at the A lot of people coming, buying. a lot of people talking, a few people buying, yes, yeah. yeah. All right, so thank you very much for participating. Thank you very much. Good luck, I enjoy it, and right, thanks. hope to see you next year. Too. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Thank you. We'll be back at the Arch Hub. Hi, I'm here at SNA Beats in Tacoma Park, and I'm here with Emily and her team. We're going to do a quick introduction so you all can meet the artist. Hi, we're at SNA Beats. Um, this is a family run business. We've been in business for about 30 years. These are all my wonderful ladies, they're all artists in their own right. I have been with SNA Beats for, I guess, about four years now, and 
I actually am not a beat artist, unlike the rest of my coworkers. I am really a musician <laughs> at heart. And so I, um, are we talking about the art hop? Or yeah, do we that talk would be great. G give us a little bit about, about your background too. Because my background? Yeah, music. How did you become interested in beats? Well, I, you know, was during, <laughs> during the economic downturn, 2009, mm -hmm. I was laid off from my job in a cube as a technical writer and thought I wanted to do something different. So a little more creative. A little more <laughs> creative. So Emily and Larry helped me get started in this very creative um, outlet. outlet. And uh, so now I've kind of combined my beading with my music. And my line is called Rock and Joplins. And I display my beads in my bass case. And <laughs> The plan is to take it on the road, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> and how did you all meet? Um, she just we, everybody came into us, and we just mm -hmm. love their energy. And this is Johanna Barnett, and she is a wire wrap artist. She's got her own yes. business. Yes, um, I started working here, um, I believe, in October. Um, I've been making jewelry for about two years now. Um, I work a lot with uh, wire and wire items. Um, I work with a lot of natural gemstones and um, other natural materials, including um, pine cones and um, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> mm -hmm. gemstones. Um, yes, pine cones and gemstones. Um, and this is Amy Abrams. Hi. I've been working for SNA Beads for just under three years. Um, and I was a, a customer, though, for probably 20 years before I started working here, off and on. Um, I've been making jewelry for over 20 years. I am now doing metal clay jewelry. These are some of my bracelets. I'm wearing one. Um, metal clay is a type of clay that fires to pure metal. And I work in fine silver, copper, bronze, and white copper, and beautiful natural gemstones. And my work is heavily inspired by my love of belly dance. I use a lot of Middle Eastern themes and henna tattoo art, artwork and things of that nature, and the gemstones themselves. And this is our longest standing employee, Cheryl Moody. Hi, how are you? Um, I've been here for uh, 21 years. Um, I came from California. I had a line of jewelry uh, designs that were in films and TV shows. And uh, I met Emily's lovely mother uh, at a gallery opening and it took off from there. And I have been working here and with my own work ever since. I do a lot of uh, pieces, statement pieces that uh, a lot of entertainers and performers love. They're made out of fabric and uh, collections of beads. They're very mixed media. Um, and uh, I've been really fortunate over 40 years of doing jewelry, maybe closer to 45, and things have been produced and filmed and all kinds of good stuff. And what would you say is the most popular item in your line? Um, I'm wearing it. Uh, this was on the cover of Essence magazine, and it was the most elaborate piece that I ever made. It took over 70, 80 hours to make. And it was um, uh, one of Queen Latifah's who was wearing it on the magazine cover on Essence, and one of her favorite pieces. And it just took off like wild cakes. First phones on the airplane. I got orders from all over the world for this piece. Yeah. You guys are all over the place. Yeah, yeah. I'd say we're at home for people that want to make their own jewelry, mm -hmm. crafters, and for people that want finished jewelry. We all make our own jewelry, so everybody's bound to find something no matter what your tastes are. Now, do you also find a lot of male coming to buy beads? Or Actually, there's a big upsurge of guys coming in. I think they're starting to really like the bracelets, and I, um, I made a mala right here, which is very unisex. Mm -hmm. Um, and men wear them a lot of times if they're into the more holistic properties of the gemstones. They all have healing properties and um, I think men really are coming around to the jewelry. They're coming around they are, to right? it. Yeah. yeah. Very That's true. Yeah, yeah. Um, did you also offer classes? For we do. We happens? offer classes, yeah, so that you can learn to make your own stuff. We do private beading classes. We'll do parties. And we just do normal ones where you can learn how to wire wrap or how to knot, how to finish things in multi-strand endings. 
anything like that and it's really exciting and it's a small class of five to six people so by the time you leave everybody knows the skill and they can go home and start beating on their own. Um, it's a really cute thing that the community of Tacoma Park does every year. Each shop along this row will host an artist. For us we're doing our in-house artists of all of our women that work here and it's really fun and if you guys have friends or anything it's great to walk up and see all of them. There's a meet and greet and each place will have a reception and I think there's even live music this year. Okay, and it's done every year? Every year, yeah. It's normally an, a full weekend. Okay, it yeah. is usually the last week in April uh, for anyone that's interested. I think it really varies. But okay. Maybe? I don't know. I think it changes. April to May, I would say, is when it happens. Great. Yeah. Well, again, thank you so much. Definitely. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thanks for thinking of us, you guys. We appreciate it.